Hello and welcome to this edition of Meditations for the Thursday of the um, 21st week of Ordinary Time. I'm your host, we're your host, Father Mark Maxson. And uh, Jim Grant um, at KNXT as a host and producer and also newly named to be the Director of Social Justice Ministry for this beautiful Diocese of Fresno. Today we celebrate the St. Monica Feast Day. St. Monica is the um, famous mother of St. Augustine. And she was born in Christian family in Roman Africa. And Monica was a young girl when she married Patricius, a non-Christian older man. They had four children, and through Monica's prayer and influence, her husband received baptism. Monica poured out tears and prayers to God for the conversion of her oldest son, Augustine. After he was baptized, Monica died peacefully in Ostia, Italy, her mission accomplished. Let me think. There's one little quote from Monica that we think of St. Augustine being the great writer, but we have a beautiful thought from beautiful Monica. And here's what she says. There is one reason and one alone why I wished to remain a little longer in this life, and that was to see you, Augustine, a Catholic Christian before I died. And God has granted me my wish. So what is left for me to do in this world? In fact, soon thereafter, soon after the baptism of her son, for whom she prayed so much, she did pass because she saw no other reason kind of to be alive. And then Augustine actually was bereft after her passing because they were very close. And it really was a loss to him that his beautiful mother, whom he loved, did pass so soon after his baptism. What a wonderful story of a mother's love for her son. And so we pray. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. O God, who consoled the sorrowful, and who mercifully accepted the motherly tears of St. Monica for the conversion of her son, Augustine. Grant us through the intercession of them both that we may bitterly regret our sins and find the grace of your pardon. Our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Today's reading is from the Gospel of Matthew, chapters 24, verses 42 through 51. What Matthew is sharing now is basically directed to the leadership of this infant community, this early church. And here's what he says. Here's what Jesus teaches us. Keep awake, therefore, for you do not know on what day your Lord is coming. But understand this. If the owner of the house had known at what part of the night the thief was coming, he would have stayed awake and would not have let his house be broken into. Therefore also, you must be ready, for the Son of Man is coming at an unexpected hour. Who then is the faithful and wise slave whom his master has put in charge of his household to give the other slaves their allowance of food at the proper time? Blessed is that slave whom his master will find at work when he arrives. Truly, I tell you, he will put that one in charge of all his possessions. But if that wicked slave says to himself, my master is delayed, and he begins to beat his fellow slaves and eats and drinks with drunkards, the master of that slave will come on a day when he does not expect him and at an hour that he does not know. He will cut him in pieces and put him with the hypocrites, and there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. The Gospel of the Lord. Thanks be to you, Lord Jesus Christ. The lectionary has skipped over the long first part of Matthew's chapter 24 with Jesus' prediction of the destruction of Jerusalem. In this chapter passage, the Gospel now focuses on the preparedness of the leaders of Matthew's community these servants are put in charge of wisely feeding the fellow servants in their master's household. 
But they must remember that they are not the master. They are not to beat up physically or emotionally their fellow servants, nor to eat and drink wantonly and lose control of the situations through their drunkenness. Leaders should lead through works of mercy as the Lord did. I deserve mercy, not sacrifice, according to Matthew 9, 13. The image of the Lord coming like a thief in the night is also found in 1 Thessalonians, Thessalonians chapter 5, verses 2, and Revelation chapter 3, verses 3. And in 6.15, it's also in Mark and Luke with the varying imagery. And Jesus warns, no one can enter a strong man's house to plunder his property unless first ties up the strong man and he can plunder the house. I think it's, it's the point where if there was anyone who stood firm in their faith, as in 1 Thessalonians 2.2, it would have been a St. Augustine's mother, Monica. And can you imagine her many sleepless nights, tears shed and prayers uttered for her son? This, of course, reminds us that standing firm doesn't mean not being racked with scary emotions and fears. Rather, faith is not a novocaine or a sedative, but a rather willful determination to say yes to God with all our emotions, all our being and our heart strength and mind, and to carry on in prayer, especially that prayer, the powerful prayer of conversion. What do you think, Jim? Well, what I think is um, when we read a scripture, one thing that we're always tempted to do is put ourselves in a very positive light in the scripture. So we wind up being the one who might be rewarded or the one that is commended or the one who doesn't get called out. I would challenge ourselves, myself first, to read this one not as the servant who gets beaten up, but as the servant who beats up, and wonder in what ways might we be needing to hear this word of not caring for those that are under our tutelage, under our care, under our service, at home, at work especially in ministry. Are we those high and mighty who in any way abuse, take advantage of, despise, disparage, or denigrate others? Or are we the ones who actually support the more weak and the ones needing the more help? I think this Gospel of Matthew, which is the Gospel of the Church, it's a churchy Gospel, It's really meant for people in our faith, in our community, to learn behaviors. And this one is very pertinent, I think, to all of us who in any way have any exercise of ministry. Yeah, it draws us by example. You know, what is a faithful and prudent servant? And one, you know, who can follow Christ and and utilize this. And I think that's something that these are the servant's virtues. And when we don't do what what this, this servant does... In other words, you know, it's it's how, you know, th- this this type of person, th- this unfaithful s- uh, servant, will be dealt with in, 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 by Christ. I think that's you know, it, if we look at each other as the children of God, and how the Father's love is infinite, then it's how we behave, you know, and how we live as, as this children of God and with one another that we accept and love, and then follow those those commands of Christ. But also, yes at the basis of this, to serve and love one another. May the peace of Christ be with you always. The love of God be in your lives. Good day.